if we've ever invoked Flavortown before, maybe we were misusing it because like this is actually a bullet train headed straight to Flavortown. Full stop. I am making strip steak with umami butter sauce. This uh, umami butter sauce starts with a base of caramelized miso. When I think about this sauce, like think about like a mild buffalo wing in terms of hot sauce and butter. I like that this is something that like feels like you cooked it outdoors and certainly it's a meal like you maybe want to eat outdoors when the weather's really nice, but it's just super easy to tackle in your kitchen, no special occasion required. I like to use strip steak just because it tends to be like fairly compact. Generally speaking, my default these days is to just go like salt and salt only, but you gotta be generous with it. I'll do both sides and then I'll do the ends as well. Seasoning the fat cap, because why the hell not? And then all these edges, instead of oiling the skillet, okay, which is gonna send up plumes of white smoke in your kitchen. I'm gonna oil the steak, lightly, nicely coated, all right? And then we can lay it in there. We're gonna build up a great sear over time here. We're gonna flip every minute or so. Every steak cooks differently, okay? Hold on, we're gonna flip. Every steak cooks differently, depending on how much fat and how much lean it has. It's eventually gonna get the same level of sear you otherwise would have if you were just leaving it on one side for four or five minutes, but it's doing it way more gradually and more gently to the meat. We have achieved like a really great sear. You know, we're gonna keep this going a little bit longer um, just cause we need to reach the internal temperature we're looking for, which is gonna be about like one, 20 about. Um, I'm getting like 112 here. Now's when I might stand it up just to render out that fat cap a little bit more. So I've always found, you know, like initially the temperature seems to climb very slowly and then it climbs very quickly towards the end. I think we're there. Steak is resting. Okay. 10 minutes minimum. The unevenness in temperature kind of distribution throughout the different kind of like areas of the steak are gonna even out to a degree during the resting period, as will the juices. While the steak is resting, we have just enough time to do our uh, umami butter sauce. While we're using sriracha, you know, we're calling for it specifically in this recipe because it is so widespread, but it's not your only option here. You know, there is just such a wide range of hot sauces. Anyway, the point being, you've got options here. The thing that's really amping up the umami in this is miso. Miso, very high in um, glutamates. You know, it's a fermented product that has like just so many different uses. We're just kind of getting some bubbling here. That's still pretty like tan, okay? Caramelizing the miso intensifies the flavor. It's gonna bring out the savory side of miso because miso has some sweetness to it. Around the time that it starts to stick to the bottom of the saucepan is about the time that it's ready. So now, quarter cup of water going in, half a cup of sriracha, and then we can just whack the butter right in there. Like this is low fuss, low muss. This is already looking pretty nice, glossy, creamy, emulsified. We need some salt here just to bring out those flavors a little bit further. If you feel like you've got pieces of miso in there or it's not quite as creamy as you want it to be for any reason, I've got you. Go, go gadget immersion blender. So a quick immersion blend has that wonderful ability to just like create an even tighter emulsion. It also kind of brightens the color a little bit. You see the difference? It is bright, it is glossy, it is tangy, it is rich, and it's done. Steak is done sauce is done and then for garnish we you know you can use scallion any kind of raw allium frankly would work here these are lovely gorgeous 
purple spring onions um, that I'm gonna use. I like to use like a mix of the bulb plus a little bit of the green as well. I love a little bit of the punch just from like the raw onion on there. This is like the moment of truth. It's like more of like a medium, not too thin and not too thick. And then just fanning those slices out enough so that like when you sprinkle a little bit of salt on it, you know, it kind of hits a little bit of the inside of each piece. You want to use this sauce warm. So you can make this ahead, like even like up to a week ahead, but definitely rewarm it, you know? You can obviously just serve like a little pool of it on the side. I do really like what happens, you know, when you just do like a nice kind of streak right down the length. It just has this lovely drape to it. So I like to break apart the rings of the onion just a little bit before I scatter them. And then they just need to kind of fall where they fall. You know, you can't be too precious about it. There's so much aroma coming off of like that hot sauce. And then just this like lovely burnished meat. Listen, I don't think we should be eating steak every night, you know, far from it. But if I'm gonna be eating meat, I want it to be really good. I want a little extra dab of sauce on the side here. It's a total flavor roller coaster. You just get this like wonderful, all enveloping, mouth filling flavor. It's hitting every taste receptor in a different way. And I think that makes it a little bit unusual. I cannot wait for you guys to try this. And you need to get to it in the next five minutes. This is like a rocket headed straight to like flavor space. 